So how can we get you excited in this Talbot Horizon? This, for us, is a perfect car. Right, we need to pull over as soon as we can because that there's steam coming out there. I think things are going from bad to worse. Yeah, they're um, they're not pulling in a straight line, but at least they're stopping. <laughs> Hello, we're UK Barn Finds, and this is our 1984 Talbot Horizon LS Auto. Let's have a quick look at it. This is going to be a bit of a different one for us because although we bought this car in January, it's now May. We haven't driven this car. Won't go into all the details, but all hell broke loose here. This has been parked up in our workshop and hasn't moved, hasn't turned a wheel in months. We haven't taken it on the road. We don't know what it's like inside. And we're going to find out today and you're going to find out with us. As you can see, it's still got some of the auction paperwork up on the door. And you're probably asking yourself, why did you buy a Talbot Horizon? And even more, why did you buy an automatic? Well, I'll tell you why. I've never had an 80s or even a 70s automatic car. And I said to Guy Snelling at Anglia Car Auctions before the auction, I really want to experience one, just so I can know whether I like it or not. This is a very basic one. This is gonna give me, I hope, a real good idea of what driving a 1980s, fairly cheap, automatic car felt like. What we did find when we got the V5 for this car is that it lived literally around the corner from us, possibly like two miles. Um, I'd never seen it before, seen it since on social media. Um, haven't had a proper look round, so we are going to have a quick look round. Just to let you know, the battery was charged a few weeks ago I thought I was going to have to recharge it this morning just so that we could get the car up here and do this. It started first flick of the key on choke. Didn't run great. I tried to drive it too soon, I think. So you do. I think I do need to let this one warm up a bit before I hit the gas pedal and go. But for as far as starting went, I was impressed because it's been sat there for a few months. Um, looking around it, We've noticed, you know, obviously it's a 1984 car. It's in beautiful condition. It's got a few little dings, um, just the things that you'd expect. You know, obviously faded plastics, bits of trim. I noticed here a little, at some point had a little ding in the bumper that's been touched up, but nothing that I would change. This is exactly how we like the car. So if the previous owner is watching this, Congratulations, honestly, this is an absolutely lovely car and um, we're gonna have some real fun with this. Um, whether we keep it or not, we don't know. Uh, but if we don't, we always make sure that it will go to a right owner rather than just someone who flashes money in front of us straight away. Cars like this should be with the right person. Little bits, like I say, little tiny bit of rust there. Um, we, could, we could get these sorted, we don't know yet. A little bit of bubbling here. But you, know, you can see where the paint's been touched up on the arch there. But it's, it's how I would do it. I don't like perfect paint jobs. I don't like perfect bodywork because then I'm just scared. I'll never drive them. We live in the middle of nowhere. Just getting onto the main road would ruin a car if it was a perfect condition car. This for us is a perfect car. Now, we're going to have a look inside in a moment. Claire is behind the camera at the moment. Hello, Claire. Hello. And we're going to have a look at some of the features that you'll get in this and stop laughing because I know it will have some features. We'll be impressed because we are easily impressed. It's an 80s car. It's not going to have inbuilt sat nav and Bluetooth, but we'll have a look at what it does have rather than what it doesn't have. Okay, before we get started and have a look at the vast array of what appears to be four buttons, um, there are two things that Claire's obsessed with in a car whenever we get a car and that is the horn Helps if I press the right lever <laughs> Oh, what a belter that is and the radio Oh Hang on, let's try starting her 
and the radio. No. Okay. Sorry, Claire, looks like we're going to have to have a look at that one at a later date. No 80s tunes for you today. Okay, so let's start from the passenger side and work our way across. Wing mirrors, adjustable from the inside again. Speakers in the door, manual windows. The bonnet catch is down there. I know that works because I've used it to charge the battery. Got a glove box, which has got a few bits in, including possibly the original Tolbert badge. Bracket of some sort. A clock that's ticking away. Heater vent or fresh air vent. We'll have to have a look at that one. Work out exactly which what that does. That's just down here. The radio that doesn't work. The all important automatic gearbox gear stick. Um, fog lights I can't check right now because Claire's sat behind me. We've got a rear windscreen wiper. I'll put it on, but you stay still, Claire, because if you start spinning around on here, it's going to look very strange. But can you hear that? That's the rear windscreen wiper working well. Rear windscreen heater. Hazard lights. Sound like they're in a bit of distress themselves, but that's all good. The choke. We've also got an interior light that works. Yay! So obviously you've got your, your dashboard, temperature, fuel, your warning lights. Never going to know if they're working or not until they uh, come on or don't. And then the heater controls are over here. So that vent is, I believe, something to do, the vent I mentioned previously, something to do with the windscreen. Um, heater, fan is working, always a bonus. But that's pretty much it. Obviously your steering wheel, wipers. We'll start her up. See if we've got, oh yeah, we've got washers. As I said, this car is MOT'd, so I didn't expect it not to work, and the, the people who had it before really did look after it. So I'm here sat in the back, and it's very nice and comfortable, and while I've been nosing around, I found these ashtrays here. I don't quite know why they used to have ashtrays in the back, considering children used to be in here. But look, there's stuff in here. That looks like a chewit wrapper, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, look at that. Black currant chewits, maybe, and the princely sum of 17p. What else have we got in here? Oh, my word. A cigarette butt. The other thing that appeals to me about this car is that we've actually got some rear seat belts. So I can actually take this along and do the school run in it. So how can we get you excited in this Talbot Horizon? Right, number one, we think it might be the last auto left currently on the road. Could be wrong. We're only going by what we've seen on the internet. Also, we'll get Claire to pan around the engine bay, which is very clean. The eagle-eyed among you may have spotted something different about this. This has power steering fitted which we believe Tolbert did themselves as a test. We need to check on that, but having power assisted steering back in 1984 on a basic car like this, I think is pretty cool. So come on, join us. We're gonna have some fun. Get excited about the Tolbert horizon. Okay, so let's have a look in the boot. You might have noticed that I didn't rush to get in there. I don't have a good track record with boot struts and bonnet struts. So I always make sure that they're actually still working, which obviously this one is. Um, it's the boot, I would say, perfectly good size. Still got the parcel shelf, which is fantastic. Do you reckon you could get our shopping in there, Claire? Yeah, easy. Um, not much else to see. There's a jack. Rear washer bottle. The spare wheel is underneath the car 
And if you think I'm crawling under there in this soggy moss, you've got another thing coming. Trust me, the spare wheel is under there. It's basic, as we've said, but honestly, look at how solid it is. Um, it's a great car. Let's go for a test drive. Quick question for you. A few people have said that we should go to the Haggerty Festival of the Unexceptional. We've got a bit of a dilemma. Which car do we take? Is it going to be the Talbot Horizon, the Vauxhall Cavalier, or that lovely Datsun New Cherry that we showed in one of our first videos? We'll pop links to the videos of those below. If you could comment and let us know which one to take. If we do go, we'll see if we can go with the one that you choose. Thanks. So now it's the fun bit. What are we doing? About 50 mile an hour. It doesn't feel like it, does it? No, not at all. It feels noisy, though. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Uh, <laughs> if feeling noisy is a thing, I know what you mean. Everything's like r rattling, and um, it's because it's so sparse in here, you hear it, don't you? Yeah. I must say, though, the seats are super comfy. They are. But like, it's fair to measure, they're much more comfy than my daily Suzuki. This is lovely on my back, this one. Yeah. You kind of like sink into them, don't you, actually? Yeah, yeah. What I'd like to do is get that radio sorted. Yeah. Because as much as I like this sound at the moment, I reckon if we went on a journey, we'd soon get sick of each other's voice and I'm not having you singing. <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely get sick of your voice after yeah. about five minutes. Oh, charming! <laughs> Thank you, what? Mr. Audi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stereotypical. I know, no, we're not going to go there. No, no, let's not go there. We're not going to talk about Audi drivers or cyclists, Claire, OK? No, we're not going to buzz. No, what I was going to say before we were rudely interrupted was, um, what are the brakes like? We nearly found out, didn't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know. What I will do in a minute, I won't do it yet. Let's get the car warmed up and fueled. All right. Um, I'll give you warning, just as if you're in a driving test, and I'll slam them on somewhere safe later. Okay. They're, you know, they're all right for slowing down. Oh, right, let's see if it will go. Wow. Um, OK, it's not as quick as the Maserati. <laughs> but she's a 1.5, though, isn't she? Not the Maserati, this, no, yeah. This. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, uh, 1.4 and a half, look at it. I don't know if they call that a 1.4 or a 1.5, but yeah, I think it's 1442cc. All right, it's got 1.5 on the back. Has it? They're yeah. cheeky. They're stretching that out, these French. <laughs> I haven't really got much to compare this against. My last automatic, I haven't driven for over a year, is the XC90, and that's, yeah. well, I say, I haven't got much to compare. It is a good comparison. That's a modern car, a lot more power. I really liked the auto gearbox in our Volvo, actually. Yeah, I, li I like auto driving for journeys. It just takes one less thing, uh, you know, out of the equation, doesn't it? And we never had a problem with a modern automatic gearbox, thankfully. It just seems weird to me having an automatic in a smaller oh. car. I will get used to where all the levers are. There's three levers on here, and the last one I used to try and find the indicators was the right one. We had wipers and something that didn't even move first. That's the horn and the lights. Does the fuel gauge work in this? Well, it's moved. All right, it okay. says we have fuel. If we stop up here and you've tempted fate, <laughs> you'll be walking to the petrol station to get a can of fuel. We've only got to go up the end of this road. Um, that's me trying to kick it, get a bit of speed out of it. But it does it, but as you can hear, it's it's not a sports car. But it's not struggled, it's just slightly different revs than I would do with a manual car, I think. 
but it's the same with every automatic. You've got to kind of find out where it likes to change, and you can actually sort of play with them a little bit with your foot. Oh, I've done it again, look. Yeah, that's not an indicator, love. That's a wide thing. <laughs> Give me about 100 miles and I might actually get the hang of that. <laughs> Every bloody car is different. I'm not 100% sure whether this would run on, you know, just super unleaded. I always put super in, but um, we will put a little bit of lead additive in just to make sure until I find out. I'll have a read through that folder and see if it tells us anything. And that Paris assisted steering is, is really helpful. Okay. Put 20 quid in, which is about a gallon these days, isn't it? You asked if the fuel gauge is working. It's moved up. We're just under half a tank there, look. Excellent. That's interesting. So now we are struggling a little bit there. I'm not sure what's causing that. Let's hope we get around this roundabout, all right. Seems alright though, I didn't want to rev then, did it? No. Something to keep an eye on. I think so, yeah. It'll just be me and the car. I doubt it'll be the car. Right, we need to pull over as soon as we can because that there's steam coming out there. Can you see? Yes, I can see. Okay, steam. right, come on, lights, bloody change. Temperature gauge is showing fine, but that's not cool. No. Can pulling up the top there at by mountains, can't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these, these lights need to change. They're going, they're going. What is it about us and drama lately? Yeah, I can oh, smell can you smell it? It stinks. Right, let's lay by here. Is this a lay by or a Yeah, yeah, just yeah. do it, just do it. I think it's the brakes. I think they're bound on over there. Okay. See, that is red hot. Right, okay. Um, we're going to have to basically abort this. We're going to have to wait for this to cool down yeah. and drive straight home. Yeah. I can't see anything. Obvious, isn't it? You did ask about the brakes. I did, didn't I? Yeah. This wasn't what I had in mind, though. Yeah. No. Okay, that got a bit more interesting after we switched the camera off. Thankfully, we live down a long private country road. As we were coming down there, the brakes have all but gone. That's going right to the floor, and it will just about. I wouldn't want to do that at speed. We were doing about two mile an hour then. Something very amiss with the brakes. A couple of little things. Foot's on the pedal, putting pressure on. Turn the car on. And it goes down. So the, the servo's working. If you want to have a look under the bonnet, I've just had a quick look. Fluid's fine, so we haven't lost fluid, nothing's burst. Servo's working. The stink is coming from over the near side front wheel, and that is still there. Ow, hot. And that's been parked here a few minutes. So that's where we'll start, we'll have a look. Ho-hum. I think things are going from bad to worse. We've just finished filming. I'm gonna go and take the wheel off. And to me, it looks like that corner's just sunk. What's happened? I don't know. That's definitely down on that corner. Oh dear. Is it? That definitely felt like it sunk, didn't it? And it looks sunk. This was supposed to be like a nice, easy photo shoot day. <laughs> Video shoot, whatever yeah, you want to call this it. Is, this is us, this is UK barn finds, nothing ever goes to plan. Turning into a nightmare. 
Look at that. <laughs> Two mile an hour skid. Um, I'm flummoxed. Was it because it was on lock and this? That definitely sunk, that corner. It did. And now, does it look all right? I, don't, I can't see from you, but it... Well, it seemed all right. I mean, I'm looking through a viewfinder, so... All right, and it drives... I'm, I can't drive it properly at the moment because I've got no brakes, so... Hop in. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything about it sinking because you were in that side and we'll see how we get on. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't <laughs> think I hit that many croissants yeah. this morning. Maybe Let's I did. Go. OK, just to add another element to the mix. We thought over the back there that the corner had sunk down. Can't find anything wrong with it. I've just driven it down to the workshop. I was just going to park it up, wait for it to cool down and then have a look to see if the brakes are bound on. And now I've got brakes again. Is this like Herbie of the Talbot world? <laughs> Le Herbie. Because look, can you see my feet there? Yeah. Now we have brakes. Yeah, definitely got brakes what now. What I'll do is, you've got your seatbelt on, haven't you? Yeah. We're on a private farm, so don't worry. There are no people here. I'm just going to quickly put them on here. Ready, go. And now we have brakes. What the hell? We still need to find out what caused that. I can't go on the road with that at the back of my mind, but those are perfectly good brakes, exactly the same as when we started. So I've got a feeling they've just bound on, they've freed up, but if they're a bit crusty, we'll just get them out, clean them up, make sure the pistons are going in and out freely. And then hopefully that'll be the end of that problem. But all of a sudden, I don't know, Herbie, Christine, you tell me, the car seems to have fixed itself. It's fixed the sinking corner and it's fixed its own brakes. If it could just do itself a service, that'd be quite handy. Bloody hell. Once more, just to prove it. I'll go a little bit quicker. If we don't stop, we'll end up on the field. Yeah, I don't fancy that, love, to be fair. It's fun in the Dakar. Yeah. This ain't the Dakar. <laughs> Just close your eyes and pretend. Ready? Oh, God. Shit. <laughs> yeah, they're, um, they're not pulling in a straight line, but at least they're stopping. <laughs> That was a bit weird, that. Which way were they pulling them? So they seem to get better with use. OK, we will do one more then. Not near that bloody wall, you won't. No, I'll do it on the way back. We'll go back down here. So next time we take a car out, should we make it like a plan that I'll just go and rag the brakes a bit at the top of the farm first? No, I think perhaps the sensible thing to do would be to check them over first. Just yeah, idea. yeah, that's that's called checking them over. Genuinely, wouldn't be a bad shout, even if the car is MOT'd. So I'm not going to do it near the wall. No. I'll try not to do it too. That's interesting because we're not going fast, but the back end's kicking out, isn't it? Yeah. Can we put this away now, please? Yes, we can, dear. Yes, I think I've had enough. OK, time to have a look at the brakes. So I'll start with that corner because that's where the problem seemed to be. We're not a mechanic YouTube channel. I'm literally just going to have a look see if there's anything obvious, show you. If I can fix it, I'll fix it, but I'm not going to document all that because, like I say, I'm not a mechanic, I get by. There are plenty of channels for that out there, and I don't want someone to, you know, if I get it wrong, copy what I do and do it wrong themselves, and it'd be on my shoulders. Um, but, we'll, we, you know, we'll show you what's necessary, basically. I don't want to bore you either, so I'll shut up now. OK, that's got the car in the air. Going to pop that other corner off. Um, apologies in advance for the mess. We are having to sort out um, next time I video in here. It's going to be a lot cleaner, I promise. Claire's just popped in 
before the school runs. So I've got her for 20 minutes. I'm going to pop this wheel off and just see if there's anything obvious. Before I do, Claire. Yeah. Where's the best place to weigh a pie? I don't know, Elton. Where is the best place to weigh a pie? Somewhere over the rainbow. That'll come to you about four in the morning. Really don't get that. It's not four in the morning. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. Oh. There you go. I what? wouldn't have got that in a million years, to be yeah. fair. So, um. What's it looking like? You can't really come in here, so I'll grab a camera in a minute. Um, now, bear in mind they're working after they weren't working. Mm. Do you want me to take the camera? So? Yeah, okay. you can reach over there. Uh, the pads are new. So, it looks like the, the caliper was sticking. So, all I can do is take that off, clean it up, check it. Because it was working after we stopped. But obviously, we can't have that happening again. But there you go. It's not like nothing's disintegrated in there. It's, it looks like it's had new brakes, brakes put in recently, so we'll just have a look. See where it needs a little bit of loosening up on the caliper piston. So we mentioned the spare wheel earlier, and now we've got her up on the ramp. <laughs> now we can have a proper look. There we go. Lovely. How do you fancy getting on your knees and crawling under there and showing the entire underneath, Claire? Um, not a huge fan, but in the me? name of our art. <laughs> do you want me to do it? No, that's all right. Whoa! <laughs> Help if I don't fall over. Right, let's see if I can do a, a shot of the underneath of the car. Might as well get a good look while you can, love. This isn't going to drop on me head, is it? Don't jump. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There we go, that's the underneath of the car. What does it look like? All right, actually. Not that I'm in any way qualified to make such a statement. Oh. But as long as it doesn't fall on my head, I don't mind. Oh, Jesus, that creaked a bit then. I'm getting out, I'm getting out. <laughs> okay, a slightly closer look at the brakes. This is as much for my reference as anything. So if I do take this apart, I might stand a chance of putting it back together again. I'll tell you one thing though, Claire. Mm -hmm. All these little bits that are coming out, you can clean them up for me later. Lovely. Jeez, oh. Don't share. <laughs> right. I feel like we should have some lift music or something like that whilst <laughs> this process is going on. It's taking so long. This is where you get your SpongeBob. Ten years later. <laughs> yeah. Feels like no, ten years. No point rushing it. Don't know why I sniff that, really. Pervert. We'll have a look what that was in a minute. Some shim or something just fell out of there. What's that then? Help me out, somebody. Any Tolbert experts? So that bit that fell out is just, um, it's obviously come off here. It's the same on it, it's just some kind of label. I don't know whether that was supposed to be taken off before that went on or what. Seems a bit of an odd thing to have on there. All I can do is Try that piston, see if it's all work, 
clean it up as much as I can. And then put it all back together. Okay, I've had to come back out to the garage because I can't leave this. So I pumped the brakes a little bit earlier. That piston's out a bit. That one's hardly moved. I'm just gonna go and start the car, see if we can get them to come out and see how crusty they are. Let's have a look. Okay, I just started the car, pumped the brakes. And yeah, you can see there, a little bit, a little bit crusty. They feel smooth, they're not pitted. So, it's the morning after the night before. Having had a little think about it last night, concluded that obviously this caliper seized, the brakes on this side overheated. When we came up the lane and I lost total brake, the, the fluid must have boiled because we got the brakes back once it had cooled down. So what I did last night, I came back in the workshop, nothing exciting, didn't film it, I was on my own. Cleaned up the pads, took off whatever that was, either a powder coating or a label that was stuck. And you could see the impression of the label and the piston of the caliper was stuck into it. Cleaned up the bolts and the pins like you would do normally. The pistons themselves, I don't know if Claire can look in there, don't seem that pitted. Um, so I need the ramp back because what we're going to do before we put this back on the road is we're going to swap these flexi hoses. Um, a friend of mine suggested that they do collapse internally, which would have caused perhaps, you know, the fluid not to come back once the brakes were applied and the piston would stay in place. I've had a look, I've tried to photograph it. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but it looks like it says 0289 on the top of the hose. And I don't think that's a part number. I think that might actually be a date. So we're gonna order a set of flexi hoses, do the same to the other side. We'll change the fluid and check the back brakes and that before this car goes back on the road. But as I say, we'll get it on all together for now. So we can get it out of the workshop to get our other cars on here. And if you like and subscribe to the channel, not only will you see where we go with this next, but the other cars that I mentioned, like the Cavalier and the Cherry, we want to get those on here up on the ramp, have a look underneath and show you the bits we didn't show you before in our previous videos. So like and subscribe, please. It really does help. See you soon.